good to be here. Can you hear me? I'm using a microphone and I just, I've never used um, a microphone for my live streams. Can you just give me a thumbs up or a comment that you can hear me if you can hear me? Otherwise I will be um, not sure. Anyway, I'll just have a little bit. You guys, we are going to have some afternoon tea. I've made a special little cherry tart so we can have that together. I've got some of Harney and Sons um, herbal Paris tea. And it's lovely. This is a loose tea. It um, looks like this. It's wonderful. And, um, oh my goodness, I really hope you guys can hear me. I'm so sorry if you can't hear me. Um, let me just see real quick and make sure. Mute microphone. Mute microphone. I'm assuming you can hear me. So I'm going to just keep going. <laughs> Let's see. You guys, um, if there's anyone there, can you just send me a note that you can hear me? Because I'm using a microphone that I've never used before for a live stream, and I just want to make sure you can hear me. Okay, well, let's just keep on going. It's been a while since I've been here, and I hope you're all doing well. Um, there's some construction outside, so you might hear some hammering going on in the background. Um, but it's time for a little cup of tea. We can't really do it. Catherine, can you hear me? Could you tell me if you can hear me? <laughs> Thank you for being here. Are you ready for some tea? Let's have a cup of tea. All of my students know that nothing can be accomplished without first a cup of tea. You can hear me. Thank you so much. Thank you for letting me know that. I was not sure. So this is um, some Paris herbal tea um, from Harney and Sons. And it is absolutely fabulous. It's a decaf tea, although they do have like a caffeinated tea. They actually have a few different kinds of, hey Mohammed, nice to see you. Um, if you don't know Harney and Sons, you definitely should. They are the best tea ever. Paris Herbal. It's fabulous. Let me see if I can read you about it. Similar to the aroma, this tea tastes sweet like caramel and has a fruity flavor of black currants. You can also t taste a hint of vanilla. So black currants, vanilla, little caramel, it's a Rubio's tea. It's really nice. So we have to catch up a little bit. I have some special things to talk to you about and um, we're going to just have a little chat. This last weekend on Friday, we had our studio re recital on Zoom, and that was so precious. That was like one of the, um, that was one of my favorite moments as a teacher. <laughs> was hearing this recital in particular it was just really precious, because um, you know in the past I've had recitals in person with you know piano and everything. We rent a little church and whatnot, but to have it on Zoom with everybody all over the world is just so fabulous. So cheers. Cheers, my dears. And you know what? Um, the studio's had kind of a difficult week. A lot of people are kind of struggling with things or having um, personal family things going on. And I just want to send out some love to everybody. And I'm sure that, you know, we all could use a little extra hug. So maybe we can do a big hug together. Hey, Vienna St. George, cheers. <laughs> Let's do a big Monday hug. I also have a special instrument to show you. Oh my goodness. This is the perfect time to show you. Bring it around. The new baby. Look at this harp. This is um, a harp that I bought, was it last weekend or two weekends ago, from one of my former students um, who plays the viola. Shout out to Julian. And I just love it. So I've been using this to teach harmony and ear training in lessons. I haven't tuned it today, so it might be a little bit out of tune. So beautiful. 
so I have um, two harps. I don't know what to call this one. Um, I have two harps. This is a Dusty Strings harp. And then I have my very first harp that I've ever, ever had over here. And it's a um, Lewis Creek harp, <laughs> a Nightingale harp. So um, thank you guys so much for your comments. Thank you, thank you for being here. I, it's been a year since I've, since I've had a harp. I need to do a video just celebrating the harp, I think, but this video I really wanted to talk about a few things in particular, so, and also just kind of catch up a little bit. So, <clears throat> let's first of all draw a fairy card. Sometimes you just need a fairy card and a cup of tea. So, let's see what the fairies have to say for us today. And you know that it's fun to have, it's fun to use like tarot decks or oracle decks as part of your, you know, artistic inspiration. I just love them. They're just so beautiful. So I'm going to pull us a little card and see what comes up for, for our discussion today and see if it's, you know, see if it pertains because we're going to be talking about self-doubt and performance anxiety. And um, I want to share with you just a little summary of a book that I would love to read. I haven't read it yet. It's called Zen and the Art of Archery just kind of talk to you about some things I've been mulling over in regards to, um, you know, just like stressing about doing something and then just doing it <laughs> rather than just like stressing about it. So, um, let's see here. I can't speak any other languages, unfortunately. I would love to, but I can't. <laughs> so, ooh. This is the fairy card that we've gotten today, you guys. I'll read to you about it. So let's look at it. So there's this beautiful fairy and she's just sitting there in the forest and she's surrounded by very interesting things. There's even like a little bubble down there of something. There's an archery there, an archer, that's, that's appropriate. Um, and it's card number 32. So let's see what card number 32 is. Iris of the Rainbows. Iris of the Rainbows. Card 32. Let's see here. So it's quite a long explanation, but the main gist of Iris of the Rainbows is hope, promise for the future. Hope and promise for the future. All right, so here's the starter reading. Iris tells us that light is breaking through our present darkness and that hope is a powerful factor in speeding up this process. She does not promise us that the storm is over, nor does she say that it will never storm again, but she does say that there is brightness and beauty here. She also tells us that there's something to be gained by this passage through the storm. And the sooner we learn what it is, the sooner the storm will end. Ooh, this is totally, <laughs> this is totally appropriate. So let's just get right into it, you guys. Um, one of the things that came up, and we, it comes up every month at our uh, monthly virtual studio circle tea party. So if you want more, inter if you want more information about that, go to, go to Patreon. It's patreon.com slash bilingual masterclass. But every month we have a little tea party get together. And those of us who want to play something will play something and practice getting out of our comfort zone because it is really scary to even just sometimes just show up to a group gathering, you know, um, for, and, then, and then to play something that you have been working on, that you've been toiling away over, or maybe just something that you just recently found that you want to share. Maybe you've just started playing the violin, maybe you've, or the viola, or maybe you've been playing for ages. Um, you don't remember a time where you haven't played the instrument. <laughs> so, um, anyway, regardless of where you are on your musical journey, it's something um, that, that I think is, is important for us to just practice gathering together and sharing what we're learning, and it's lovely. But um, this last Friday was our studio circle, like a, not circle, but recital, like I was saying. And a lot of us um, really experience 
you know, being nervous and being um, a little bit shaky and loss of concentration and all of that kind of thing. And then some of us are just seem to be, seem to be totally fine. Um, but actually they, they do experience similar um, issues as well. And I think most humans struggle with some kind of, you know, performance anxiety before giving a talk or being in a group or having to do something in front of people, you know, um, for various reasons, you know, whether it's like fear of judgment or judging yourself or feeling like everybody's watching you or feeling it like you might mess up or, you know, whatever it is. But I think, and I have to say that I'm somebody that really does struggle with that. <laughs> That's why, one of the reasons why, you know, I'm going to hold on to this because I'm probably going to forget to drink it. Um, that's one of the reasons why I started to do these monthly gatherings a year ago anyway, is to just, that's something that I'd like to heal about myself. I think it's one of the things that has kept me back from really blossoming <laughs> as an artist, is just my fear of playing and performing and doing live streams has helped me with that. Um, doing the practice performance classes has helped me with that. Teaching has helped me with that. So there's been lots of different, it's not a phobia. Yeah, it's not a um, phobia. It's just like, um, it's just like an anxiety. It's just like, an, I don't even know how to really explain it. It's just a feeling that comes over you. Um, and you feel, you just kind of feel almost like incapable of doing the thing that you need to do. And I think that some of the things that have helped me with that is to allow myself to not necessarily completely push myself to do something, but I'll do a little bit. So for example, just showing up to a group class rather than showing up and feeling that you need to play something or just hosting a, a group class or, um, or even, or just showing up to the virtual studio circles, you know, for me, it was scary for me to even just think of, of hosting something like that because I don't usually deal with a group of people. I work individually with people, and so that was a little bit out of my comfort zone. But it's been the most beautiful thing. One of the most beautiful things I've ever done as a teacher is to open up and teach more like in a group setting because like, just interacting with the, with the group is wonderful, and the group gets to interact and uh, make me make musical friends and every you know month we have our little get together and it's just a special time to share it's just really been a huge blessing so that's why i guess i'm such a big advocate of of trying to like when you know that there's something that you're afraid of doing or that you're you know scared of especially if it's like you sharing something or performing I think that it's something that we might need to figure out how to heal and it will take time, you know, and I think having repeated um, experiences of positive encounters of performing or just showing up to a group, whatever, is really, really one of the best ways to kind of, kind of go down that path of healing yourself from being afraid. So um, anyway, there's a, there's a little book here, a, a little summary of the Zen and the Art of Archery that I want to just talk to you about and maybe we can discuss that and if anyone else has some thoughts about just performance anxiety or if anyone else you know struggles with that just comment give me a little comment there by the way if you like these earrings I got them at a thrift store a while ago and I re I did I rediscovered them <laughs> I just think they're so fun so everyone has their own stories of why they play music yeah that's so true it is well, the thing that I found, and this is why I'm just so interested to read this book, is that it really, this is, the book is Zen and the Art of Archery. It's because I really feel like um, it's a spiritual challenge. Like, it, yeah, you think you're going to learn an instrument, but because you personally are going to learn an instrument, um, it's just, it, it's an opportunity for growth in ways that you will not expect at all. And um, anyway, so let me just read you a little bit of this. I'm going to link this below, this summary, if you're interested. It's not currently linked, but I will link it later. So this is from the website megaessays.com, megaessays.com. 
and it is Zen and the Art of Archery. So I'm going to read just a little bit because it's three pages. So the book Zen and the Art of Archery by Eugene Harrigel discusses the spirituality connected with the art form in the sport of archery. In his book, Harrigel describes many aspects of how archery is in fact not a sport, but an art form and is very spiritual to those in the East. Okay, let's see. Sorry about the construction work outside. I hope it's not too loud. Okay, archery in this book was the way that the author found his way into Zen Buddhism. He, decided, he studied this art, which is referred to as, quote, the artless art, end quote, to gain experience in the field of Zen Buddhism. At first, one might think that archery has no place in Zen, but through discussion and explanation, it is revealed that archery is quite a large part of Zen. It is not through the actual physical aspect of shooting arrows at targets that archery is Zen, but through the art and spirituality through which it is performed. It is not merely shooting an arrow to hit a target, but becoming yourself the target, and then in turn hitting yourself, of course, not literally, but spiritually, and by meeting the spiritual goal, you will then meet the physical goal. By meeting the spiritual goal, you will meet the physical goal. The contest is therefore not with the arrow or the target, but with oneself. The whole art of archery is internal within oneself and not external with the bow and arrows. The learning process of the Zen, of, for Zen archery is a long process focused at first on drawing the bow spiritually, then moving on to holding the arrow and finally to loosing the arrow. Archery is in the sense of Zen described as a ceremony with the main goal being able to think, being able to perform it effortlessly. Stop thinking about the shot. Once you stop thinking about the shot, it will happen, but until then it will not. And it just goes on. It just sounds like something that musicians need to read because um, we just, there's so much that where we're trying to perform a beautiful piece, right? And maybe the pressure of trying to perform something and then, you know, distractions, thinking about ourself, um, thinking about how other people are perceiving us, maybe thinking about the mistake we just made, um, suddenly being on the spot, you know, and suddenly, you know, we, everybody's watching you perhaps. Or just the, just the whole experience of it can be really stressful. But it can actually also be really awesome. <laughs> it can be really, really awesome to just share a beautiful piece that you have been working on. So I feel like I'm on the other side of the spectrum. So I'm, And that's because we're talking about this. But there is a whole other spectrum of the joy of performing and sharing and connecting and all of that. And you can, you can just understand that. YouTubers understand that there's like a whole joy and just connecting with others and putting yourself out there even though it's a scary world but y the joy that you get from connecting with the world is so wonderful and of course there's a dark side to that too but um, anyway so yeah I just want us to think a little bit about um, getting out of our comfort zones when it comes to performing or speaking or being afraid to do something. It's just part of, just like a tree we were talking about in the recital the other day, that it's like a tree ring. A tree experiences growth and there's a ring that is like the memory of all of that growth and it just keeps growing and growing. And then it also, you know, it will just, it will just keep growing. It's not going to be afraid to grow. It just keeps on growing like it'll grow around the you know the telephone wires it'll grow around whatever it'll grow through the cement <laughs> um, whatever it just it's just kind of unstoppable growth and it's it's free from fear of of growth and I think sometimes we can be afraid to let ourselves make mistakes you know, make mistakes in front of others we can be afraid to just open ourselves up to others and so, um, I think that's, if you feel that way, I think that it's a, and I do sometimes feel that way too. I think we can all feel that way. I think that's something that if you can grow beyond that, you will blossom in ways that you really have no clue. You have no idea how unstoppable you'll be like the tree, you know? Um, so anyway, those are my 
a full thoughts on, at least for the moment, on, on performance anxiety and, and self-doubt. Just claim your ability to do what you were going to do. Try to not think about yourself in the process. Think about what you're doing, perhaps. Um, it'd be fun to, to actually interview somebody about this, wouldn't it? I've never done an interview before. On this channel, at least. And that would be really, really neat, I think. Let's try one of these cherry tarts. I made these last night. There was a raspberry jam and tart um, dough. Mmm. Very tasty. A little bit more tea. Do you guys have a favorite tea? I really like this Paris herbal tea because you can you can drink it any time, and as somebody that likes to drink tea, like, almost constantly, <laughs> having it be decaf is lovely. So lovely. So, yeah. I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, some books that I've been reading. I've been just loving reading. I have, we went to a bookstore yesterday. And I bought like all these cookbooks and um, um, all these other little, oh, let's see, Vienna St. George. I'm starting my show tomorrow. I'll have you, oh my goodness. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be super cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. Are any of you other, anyone else out there bookworms? It's, it's just nice to have like a stack of books and cookbooks are so fabulous. I've been learning all about French cuisine. I found a cookbook all about the Le Cordon Bleu. I probably said that wrong. Um, like it's their cookbook, one of their cookbooks. And um, the Barefoot Contessa. I just want to be in the kitchen, basically. I want to be playing, teaching, drinking tea, and uh, baking. <laughs> Baking, homemaking. I've really been loving this channel. It's called um, the um, the Daily Connoisseur. You guys go check out the Daily Connoisseur. I love her videos so much, so much. Vienna Saint George, I need your pep talk today. Just claim your ability to do what you need to do, you know, and um, don't don't let fear hold you back. Just go forward despite being afraid, <laughs> right? Um, I think a lot of comedians have to do that and um, musicians and actors and despite the fear, you just do it anyway while you're afraid and that's why there's a thing called courage, right? And um, it's a muscle, it's just a muscle. We can all, we can all do it, do that. So let me show you some of these books that I'm that I have read and am in the middle of reading. There's a pile of them in the other room, so I just brought you a couple um, books that I've I've recently read or have finished. So let's see. I've been reading all about um, the westward expansion in Texas in like the 1800s. So I'm currently reading this book, Empire of the Summer Moon. This book is so good, <laughs> so good. I can't stop reading it. Like I really have a hard time putting it down. It's one of those books that just like keeps you like right from the beginning. It will just, it locks onto your heart and you can't stop reading it. So I'm gonna have to just read this all over again once I have finished it. Um, so yes, it's about the Comanches. It's about, um, you know, the. The white population in Texas during the 1800s, it's just about just their clash and what happened in both cultures and it's just wonderfully, wonderfully written. So good. It's called Empire of the Summer Moon by S.C. Gwynn and it's probably on Audible too if you want to, if you want a really good book on Audible. Oh my goodness. And the book that I read before that was called Cult of Glory, and this is about the Texas Rangers. And it's the history of the Texas Rangers. Very interesting. Um, very, very interesting um, time period. So, 
Yeah, this was kind of more about the Texas, you know, what they were doing. So I wanted to read the uh, the kind of more of the Native American. Um, and there's also another one that I, I know a lot of us know the title, Trail of Tears. There's a book and movie called Last of the Mohicans. I found the Last of the Mohicans book in the bookstore the other day. I love that movie. We all love the theme song to that movie. Uh, anyway, it goes something like that. <laughs> it's a really beautiful violin um, orchestration. So, yeah, I'm just kind of in the 1800s right now. I think this time last year I was in, like, you know, the first century. Oh, no, no, no. It was, like, you know, 800 B.C. I was reading about, like, Homer, and I was reading maybe 400 B.C., reading about the Greeks, and, and then I read about... Um, Sparta, and I was reading all, all this stuff. I can't even remember. I was reading about fairies <laughs> and the ancient Greeks, and now I'm reading about um, the Native Americans and just the whole westward expansion. It's a fascinating time. So we're going to be taking a train, actually, in November across the U.S. So from Pennsylvania all the way to California, we're going to take a, a train. We're going to have an absolutely fabulous adventure. So, Chris, you haven't seen... Chris, by the way, it's so nice to see you. If you haven't seen Last of the Mohicans, you need to see that movie. It is so good. It's an older one. It's just really, really, really good. So, yeah, I'm going to read the book as well. Apparently, I think it was the book first. So, yeah, how have you guys been doing? Are you doing well? Do it. Shugree. Hi there. Hi. Sometimes I'm afraid to not be afraid. The result, more afraid. <laughs> You're not alone. Don't worry. You're not alone. Yes. So, well, you know what? I think I need to um, plan my lessons for, for the day. Mondays are always a super busy day. I need to post the stuff that's on Patreon. You guys, go check out Patreon. It's it's all everything having to do with Nita's Violin Zilla Masterclass, but we have a really nice community on Patreon. There's the teacups. There, well, there's the community where you get a you get a weekly post. You kind of stay in the loop with whatever all the group classes, all the group events, all the things that we're contemplating every week, and then that's only a dollar. And then there's the two the teacups, um, which is five dollars. And you get a, right now we're learning all the scales, so we're, we're going through, each week I assign um, a different scale, and there's a tutorial, there's a recording track, and of course there's an introduction video. You've seen some of these trickling out on YouTube, um, but you know, they're kind of coming up very slowly on YouTube because sometimes I forget to post them. <laughs> but every week on Patreon you get a new little scale to add to your practice. Um, and then there's the virtual studio circle tea party where you get all of that. Also discord. We have a little chat there um, where you can talk to each other and post things, you know, what, what not complain about things, you know, have a nice little musical community. And then we also once a month meet on zoom for our practice, our little tea party, basically where you, and you don't, you don't have to play anything, but you can just come listen and support your fellow musicians while they practice performing. So that's really nice. And then I am teaching group classes. Hold on. <laughs> Which is probably finish my tea. We are having the an absolute ball. We have group classes. They are um Chris says, I would like to practice my drum daily. Yes, you know what? It's been a while since I've, I've grabbed that drum. I need to do that too. I need to like just sage everything, honestly. <laughs> I think I need to just, it's spring cleaning time, but it's time to also just like do some energy work around. So, um, but yes, if you're interested in doing some group classes and just kind of coming out, getting out of your comfort zone, um, you need our book one, but we meet every other Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, and we're, we're just going through the right arm techniques of just all open string things, and wow, people are sounding really good, really, really good. So you can bring a cup of tea to that as well, and of course, with all the things we do, you don't have to, it's about getting used to, you know, working with a group, playing in front of a group, conquering some of those fears, so you just do what works for you. You don't have to join in your video, you can 
you know, everybody's muted, by the way, unless they you know, decide to unmute themselves and say something or play something or whatever. It's just a really, it's a lovely time. So all of that information about everything that is happening is on my website, Violin Viola Masterclass. And I'm really proud of that website. Go check it out. <laughs> um, but for now, you guys, um, let's just look back at this fairy card. Go into your world today and just be fabulous like this fairy here. Just look around and enjoy what you see. And even if you see a little some other things and maybe in the darkness, there's an archer there. Aim your eyes on the target. Stay focused. Right? Maybe be open to receive things. Go with, with power. Looks like she's holding something. Um, authority, maybe. But stay open. <laughs> I don't know. I, I hope that you um, just have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. And I hope that we can get together again soon. I've just been really busy. <laughs> so I know we're all super busy. So I'll see you all soon. Lots of love. Thank you for coming to join me for tea. And it's nice to see you guys. Bye, you guys. Bye, Chris. <laughs>